Thank you. Okay, so dobar dan in uh, vsem in dobrodošli. Benvindu za todus. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce Slovenia Brazil and Slovenian Global Business Network would like to welcome you all on today's conference with the topic doing businesses in Brazil. The presentation uh, on business environment aimed as companies interested in entering or finding partners in Brazilian market. After that, we will present you with an example of good practice, a Slovenian company already operating in Brazil. This event is supported by Spirit Business Agency Slovenia, the Ministry of Economic Development and Technology uh, Slovenia, and Embassy of Slovenia in Brasilia. Thank you, Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador, the Secretary of Chamber of Commerce, and all other guests and participants for being here with us. Mate Peroshek Chukini is my name. I'm the organizer and host of this conference. But before we invite our speakers to present, I'll give you a quick overview of today's event. After the introductory speech, we'll follow the presentation of Slobras Ch uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, members. In the first panel, we'll present Paolo Perotti, a lawyer at LGPD Solution, specialist in business intelligence and in negotiation techniques, the former president of the Brazilian Canadian Chamber of Commerce and also book author. In second panel, we'll present Sergio Costa, the CEO and co-founder of Strings, investment promotion specialist with extensive experience in strategy design, international business and foreign direct investment. Both first panelists will be available for any questions regarding basic principles for successful entry into the Brazilian market how to register a company in Brazil, Brazilian business facts, why open or look for business partners, and uh, what is the initial capital, banking structure, labor legis legislation, and uh, tax. In third panel, we'll present a Slovenian company, Devasoft, the leading provider of high-end data acquisition systems, already fully operating in Brazil as an example of good practice the presenter, Primo Jerome, is a Latin American uh, regional manager and web marketing specialist at Devasoft. In the fourth panel, I will invite a Slobras member, Erika Dvoshek, a copywriter, creative entrepreneur in marketing and multimedia, to briefly present a new project by Slobras Chamber of Commerce and Slovenian Global Business Network, an ebook of Slovenian business in Brazil, the land of opportunities. In the last panel, myself will show you the presentation of already operating interactive Slovenian virtual business map that includes Slovenian companies, services, products in Brazil. The event uh, will be recorded and available later on on Slobra's YouTube channel. The Q&A, you can send them here in the chat box or just by raising your hand. So now I'd like to invite your excellency, very active ambassador, Goras Rinchel, to open with the introductory speech. Please ambassador, the word is yours. Najlepša hvala Mateja. Hello everyone. Um, boa tarde a todas i todas aqui no Brasil. In predsem lep pozdrav vsem slovenskim podjetjem, ki nas spremljate iz Slovenije, ali pa tudi drugot po svetu, kakor kakor vidim in spremljam. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I will not follow a very usual Brazilian practice naming all the participants because Matea did such a great job introducing everybody, but um, I must just congratulate the organizers for, for the initiative now to do this event and also for the excellent lineup of speakers. I think um, I'm actually out of depth here to say more about how to do business in, in Brazil because we will all have a great opportunity to listen to this um, to these experts. I would rather take the privilege of being the first speaker and say and return to the initial question why at all think about Brazil when you when you think about internationalizing. Um, and as a starting point, I will borrow um, from Erika uh, the expression Brazil, the land of opportunities. Now this might um, then imply that um, Brazil is a sort of a business Eldorado where things just happen without difficulties, without challenges, and that, of course, is not true. Um, we all know any any new any new market, any new 
um, enterprise uh, in internalization takes an effort, takes preparation, and Brazil is, is no exemption. Uh, you might have heard of the expression called uh, Custo Brasil, which consists of the whole um, range of challenges that one might, might, must face when they consider doing business in Brazil, from administrative burdens to uh, tax and financial implications. But um, at the same point, I want to emphasize that um, all of these challenges and difficulties, as you might call them, um, are not insurmountable. Um, I think, um, to the contrary, they, um, if in the group preparation, if you talk to the experts, such as the ones that we will have the pleasure of listening today, if you prepare well, I think uh, Brazil is vale a pena, as, as Brazilians say, it's worth it. No, I think it's, uh, it's a very good proposition for any, for any businessman with serious ambitions in global markets. Why? Um, first of all, Brazil is a, is a market of 200, about 210 million people with considerable already and growing purchasing power. Um, so a, a great um, market for the future, a land of opportunities, um, you, might, you might call it. Second of all, uh, Brazil has an economy that has been traditionally for a long time closed or protected, I would say, you know, protectionist. Uh, but for a while now, uh, the strategic orientation um, of, the, of, the, uh, of the state and of the economy is to open up and to liberalize, um, which opens a whole set of opportunities for um, European and other, other companies as well. Um, Brazil is also undergoing um, a very comprehensive and deep structural changes. Um, the structural agenda, um, I mean, the structural reform agenda uh, has begun with the, with the pension reform, which was adopted uh, a while ago now, but uh, there's also on the table the tax reform and the administrative reform, which would be very important. And if Brazil manages to implement um, both reforms, or at least parts of those reforms, I think we will see a new Brazil with, uh, with again, a completely new playing field for uh, businesses, both domestic as well as the, as the foreign traders and investors. Um, and all of this also um, has, uh, has an implication in the wider setting how Brazil is seen today, for example, from the European perspective. So um, two, strategic, um, uh, two strategic orientations of Brazil I might mention. One is the EU Mercosur Trade Agreement, which uh, of course is aimed to facilitate the trade between the European Union and the four countries of the Mercosur, but of the four, Brazil being by far the most uh, important and the biggest, uh, um, others being Argentina, Uruguay, and Paraguay. And the second one is Brazil just earlier this, this year, in January, um, received uh, an invitation to join, uh, to join the OECD, at least to start the session negotiations to join the OECD, um, which will, of course, give the seal of approval, which um, Slovenia and other OECD members already have. Now, this is not the exa exhaustive list of the benefits of why you should consider Brazil. Um, there are many others. I will add just one more, which is, um, which is a, what I always, always mention, because I think it's important and people might not realize, um, um, for example, coming from Slovenia. And that is that um, despite the huge geographic distance, now, if you take the 10,000 kilometers, for example, that lie between me sitting in Brasilia and you perhaps sitting in, in, in Ljubljana, and so if you take the 10,000 kilometers and go any other direction in the world, I think you will have a very, very hard time finding a country, uh, business partners who would speak the same language, cultural language I'm talking about now, no? where you might start um, uh, business and other meetings with um, the other side saying, well, gra my grandmother was from Trieste, or you know, my, my uncle um, still lives in Portugal, Germany, um, or you know, Slovenia for that matter. So I think that counts also, especially to begin with when you're trying to discover uh, and um, discover the opportunities of the new market. Um, I think um, this is the right time to be thinking about Brazil. Um, and this is also why we are seeing now um, in the terms of bilateral trade between Slovenia and Brazil, after some difficulties, obviously, um, as anybody else had because of the pandemic, we see the numbers between Brazil and Slovenia going up back to the re record levels pre-pandemic. Uh, we have also had very recently, last week actually, um, a great opportunity to open up a new Slovenian-Brazilian project um, here very close to Brasilia in Annapolis in Guayas. Uh, it's not really a joint venture, it's more of a technology transfer um, project of the Slovenian developed technology uh, being used by a very ambitious um, Brazilian company. 
So we, we are seeing reawakening of this of this interest for Brazil in Slovenia. And I think uh, this conference could not be more timely. Uh, you're in the right place. So if you are a Slovenian business um, thinking about uh, doing business in, in Brazil, uh, all I can say is prepare well, listen to the people who will follow follow my introductory speech uh, and, and just go for it. Thank you for your words, Mr. Ambassador, for your valuable insights and why to invest in Brazil. We're very happy to have you here. Greetings also goes to the president of Chamber of Commerce, Slovenia and Brazil, Slobras, Mr. Matej Sokan, that he also has joined us here today. But I'd like to give the word now to the Secretary of Chamber of Commerce, Slobras, and also entrepreneur, Mr. Sandy Rauber, for short introduction of Slobras and also his active business projects in Brazil. Please, Sandy, the floor is yours. Thank you a lot. Uh, my name is Sandy Rauber. I'm a Slovenian citizen. I moved to Brazil uh, three years ago. Um, I have a triple role here in Brazil. On one side, I am a secretary at the Chamber of Commerce Slovenia Brazil, uh, Slobras. Slobras provides uh, business information to members and to companies. Uh, we also organize a series of business and social network, uh, networking events. Uh, for example, in the past, uh, entrepreneurs of Slovenian descendancy like Alexander Klebania introduced uh, their companies or uh, ex-ministers like Rubens uh, Ricupero uh, explained uh, their views on uh, business and society. Uh, at Slobras, we try to promote the culture and the commercial relations between Slovenian and Brazilian businesses. And uh, uh, we also try to help Slovenian companies and their steps and their first steps when they try to enter or when they try to understand the Slovenian markets. So for every Slovenian company that wants to uh, take or try their first steps to Brazil, I suggest that we are the first partner where we just can provide our own experience. Uh, when it comes to me personally, I have a double role when it comes to business. Uh, together with my scientist wife, we co-founded a biotechnological startup, BioLinker. We are a small company of about 10 employees, and we manufacture recombinant proteins. For example, uh, during the COVID pandemics, it was our company which manufactured the proteins of the virus. We sold to those um, proteins to most uh, universities and um, research institutions in Brazil, and we enabled that they can do their own research when it comes to COVID. Uh, my second company is a startup called Smart Locator. Uh, we provide a software for emergency call centers. So when one of us has an emergency and uses his telephone number to telephone to call the, the police or the ambulance, we cooperate with Google and with Apple so that the precise location of the caller is sent to the police or to the ambulance or to the firefighters. And we provide these services mostly in Europe, in Germany, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg. And uh, recently we closed the business in Mexico. The Mexican police started to use our software as well. Uh, we, we are about to start the operations in Brazil. We are somehow late because we have some um, legislation uh, challenges, but Smart Locator is active in Brazil as well. Uh, that would be all for now. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, uh, Robert, and uh, presenting your companies and many success also in Brazil. Uh, and now I'd like to continue and invite uh, Jess Kodlar, the legal counsel of Slovenia Global Business Network Organization, representative in Slovenia. Please, Mr. Kodlar. Kodlar, the floor is yours. Thank you, Matea. Um, well, dear ladies and gentlemen, so let me greet you with a good afternoon, considering the current time in Ljubljana. Um, my name is Sanjay Skodlar, and today I'm here as a representative of the Slovenian Global Business Network, otherwise uh, led by, I may say, the excellency of Dr. Bogdan Shale, 
uh, we helped co-organize this event today. However, I will leave the spotlight today to our partner, uh, Slovenian and Brazilian uh, Chamber of Commerce, and indeed the uh, irreplaceable Matea, who made the most effort to make uh, today's event possible and who will be leading and moderating it. So let me just steal two or three minutes of your time to briefly introduce the Slovenian Global Business Network and uh, what we do. I, I'd say that our mission is to promote, uh, connect and inform the Slovenian business diaspora around the world and strengthen the economic ties with uh, enterprises here in the motherland. So we aim to encourage uh, business cooperation and exchange of business opportunities between, between Slovenes around the world. Uh, to highlight some, uh, just some of the latest developments. Uh, firstly, we are currently launching the slowglobal.net, an online business network platform to facilitate the coming through of our mission in today's digital connections. Um, you're kindly invited to enter your business into the uh, members network on the platform, which is free of charge. And any questions, please ask uh, Lydia Leshnik, who is here with us today. Uh, secondly, uh, you're also invited to follow our newly established LinkedIn company page and stay informed of the developments and events we organize. I believe that we are doing something right since uh, they're very well attended and occasionally we also cooperate and co organize them uh, with our partners, such as today's event. Uh, thirdly, uh, since today's leitmotiv is uh, doing business in Brazil and entering the Brazilian market, let me take this opportunity to also inform you that we also have prepared a brochure in the vice versa way. So on doing business in Slovenia and entering the Slovenian market, it will be published soon. But if, if any interested early birds are here, you're welcome to contact me and get an early copy. Uh, okay, lastly, uh, I see that today we also have representative of Slovenian companies. That's those uh, from those from the Slovenia itself. And thus, I should let you know that uh, myself and our company, Slovenian, uh, I mean, SCOS are legal and venture. While we are primarily a business legal consultancy firm, we also work as a Slovenian Global Business Network contact point here in Ljubljana. And be kindly invited to contact us. We will be happy to facilitate the connection with the right people, obviously, including especially Matea and uh, the Slovenian Brazilian uh, Chamber of Commerce. So you can be one step closer to the entry into Brazilian market while let's say still at your doorstep in Slovenia. Um, if there are any questions, I'm available in the contact in the chat. And thank you, Matea, for inviting me and let me now pass the word back to you to continue doing your magic. Thank you. <laughs> So energetic, very good. Thank you very much, Anje, for your presentation and also the cooperation uh, with uh, Slobras. So now we're gonna start with our first panel and I will welcome you now, please, Mr. Paolo Perotti. You may now present. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Paolo Perotti. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, thanks for the ambassador, Mr. Goras, uh, the secretary of Slobras, Mr. Sandy, uh, the legal counsel, Mr. Skodler, and uh, as well as Matea. Thank you very much for the invitation for being here. It's an honor and it's a pleasure to present to you the challenges. Uh, I always say that Brazil, if you do a, a SWOT uh, <clears throat> project, a SWOT study, you have uh, some good uh, challenges to, to be in Brazil, but after you were here, you have an open sky of opportunities. So you have a little bit of challenges to open your company, to open, to incorporate here. Of course, uh, Brazil, it's a, it's a very open country. Uh, we receive very well people from everywhere. But I already have a little bit of bureaucracy of, of what we do. We have our, a lot of legal procedures to follow. But once you pass these challenges, you surpass all this bureaucracy, you will see that Brazil, you can navigate, you can fly, you can. And I always say that 
the, the uh, rocket you just have for, uh, forward you don't, you don't have a rewind so you once you are here you, of course you have an, have an opportunity to do business uh, and one thing that the Brazilians do a lot of um, um, give a lot of importance is trust so I uh, meetings, uh, eye to eye conversations. So trust is something that we 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 give a lot of importance, worth a lot to us. I am a Brazilian, so I know that you when you work and when you have a, you work in a in a kind of try to give importance to that to make it clear that you 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 are not. A, a, Using you're not exploring Brazil, but you're here for a for a journey, for a long term journey. So based on that, you you have all the opportunities that you have. People you people in Brazil they love to make friends. So you don't have just commercial relations. You have a friendship relationship. So this is one thing that. Um, it's really important for us Brazilians. So I will make a start my presentation, if you all uh, with the uh, share screen, just a few seconds. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we do. Thank you very much, Matea. Thank you very much. So the first thing I will present myself, I'm CEO of LGPG Solution, I'm a lawyer. I have MBA, LLM in digital uh, law. I have also an ISO 2700. I was president of Brazil Canada Chamber of Commerce. So I, I work for a, a chamber of commerce just like it's Lovra. So I, I, I know what, what are important for foreign people to do business here. And I'm also certified as a security certified and a consultant uh, for Blockchain Research Institute. So I'm a little bit technology guy and lawyer, so I can try to uh, make it clear that everything that we say here, we are friendly. We are we would like to give you examples. My presentation is based on examples. You see all my slides, they are based on examples and how do you business here and the all the tax influences, the labor influence we have here. So uh, we have some assumptions, very important here. Okay, we have companies from Slovenia. They are interested in the Brazilian market to contract with Brazil, to have relationships with Brazil. And we have the following questions. I think you are here to, ans to, ans to answer us. So this is uh, the main questions I think you have in mind. So. How can I export my products and service to Brazil? What are the costs involved? Can I sell directly or I should have a sales representative here? Or will my agreements be enforced in Brazil? My language, which language is enforceable? May I, can I send an agreement in English? And this agreement in English may be enforced in Brazil. So how, how can I do business with a Brazilian? Do you have anything? Specific. This Brazil um, emerged in a in a in a global scale legislation, or Brazil is so different that they have all re specific regulations. It's not inserted in a attached maybe in a worldwide uh, environment. No, Brazil is is emerging in a worldwide environment. So. This is important for us to understand that Brazil is not a separated country of what we think uh, an occidental north or a occident country. So we are, uh, we, we try to do business as we do in Canada, as you do in the United States, as well as we do in Europe. So we are, we will say a, a little bit later about all the agreements that Brazil signed to be incorporated. Brazil would like to enter the OCDE, uh, the, the, the worldwide chamber uh, of commerce and the, Brazil is doing all the efforts 
uh, the legal efforts to enter in this worldwide chamber of commerce, okay? So the naked truth. So what we have in Brazil that you think you must be concerned or maybe worried about Brazil. The first thing, Brazil is compliant with most of the international laws. So most of the clauses used in international agreements are respected in Brazil. Inco terms are respected in Brazil. General agreements, the seller distribution, agent agreements, they are respected in Brazil. They, but, but we have some exceptions like the court. Once you have business with the Brazilian, our legislation say, hey, if you have a nego negotiations in Brazil, if you don't say anything, <coughs> the court will be Brazil. The language, the language you can use any language you want. You can use Slovenian, you can use French, you can use English, you can use French. However, for agreement to be enforced in Brazil, you need to have a sworn translation. So once you have a sworn translation of this agreement to Brazil, you can uh, afford it, you can make it happen in Brazil. So no uh, enf enforcement you need, you can write in any language that you want. And we have also in Brazil penalty and interest in causing the fault. So <clears throat> if you don't comply with an agreement, of course, here in Brazil, you can enforce it. Even in Brazil, if you are uh, a, a country, uh, uh, if you are based in Slovenia, and if you like to export to Brazil, if you like to enforce this agreement in Brazil, <coughs> or this supply in Brazil, you will have our legislation to protect it. All the commercial um, basement, you have all over the world, you have it in Brazil. So you don't be, uh, you don't need to be concerned about that because Brazil is respect all the international negotiations we do <coughs> in, our, in our country. <coughs> okay, sorry about that. Taxation is something really important in Brazil. So I just, as I told you, I have some practical examples. So you, need, you have a product and you intend to sell it in Brazil. So, <clears throat> you have all, all sorts of taxation. Brazil is a very complex country regarding taxation. We have a lot of tax, different tax. So depends of what, you, do you know the croc, the, the shoes, this kind of shoes here, the croc. So if croc entered in Brazil using a... Uh, uh, and this specification just as um, not shoes, but uh, with a uh, sport shoes. And then you Paolo, 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 just, Paolo, uh, excuse me, could you uh, advance the presentation? Because we only see the, the first page <laughs> of legal aspects oh, sorry. in Brazil. It's not going on, yeah. Sorry. Now you're seeing? Yeah. Now okay. we see the car. Slovenian flag in the car. Okay, that's it. That's okay. It. Sorry, continue, please. So, uh, so we have here the car, so the Slovenian flag. So we see that the, a shoe, if you if you define it as a sport shoes, you pay a uh, taxation. If you uh, define it as classical shoes, <coughs> you pay a different one. So depends on the classification of your product. Maybe you pay more or less tax. That's a, a, that's a, a, an example we give here in Brazil because once the the croc shoes changed the classification in Brazil of what they represent, they paid much less tax. So here we have a car, a product. So we have a lot of taxations based on a car. For example, as you can reach 150% uplift of the price. <clears throat> if you assemble this may, the same product in Brazil, assemble, not bringing it prepared, not bringing it to preta porte. Okay, if you assemble here in Brazil, the, 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 a car, even a car, 
you will pay much less taxation. So this is what you need to have in mind. Once you try, once you in, really intend to come to Brazil, hire a lawyer to understand how you classificate your product, if you assemble here or not, if you bring it ready or not, if it's software, if it's a hardware. So depending on the subject or depending on the product you are selling, it changed completely, okay? So the next slide I have is based on service. If you import service from Brazil, you pay from 35% to 48% of taxation. <clears throat> this is a lot, okay? However, if you have the strategy to open a Brazilian subsidiary here in Brazil, open a company, paper, just a paper, you incorporate in Brazil. You will pay just the local taxes. It's around 13% to 16%. You, and one thing that's really interesting in Brazil <clears throat> is that uh, profit, uh, you don't have any taxation regarding profit here. Dividends, dividends is not, you don't have taxes for dividends. It's one of, I think there are just a few, very few countries all over the world that doesn't have any taxation regarding dividends. And here, Brazil is one of the case. And once you have incorporate a company in Brazil and you send profits to Slovenia, you don't pay any tax. So this is one of the things that you must have in mind when you try to incorporate here, because even just you incorporate here, a company, open a company here, sell here, pay the direct taxes here, and send profits to Slovenia. And you don't pay any additional tax. It's a Brazilian operation. It's compared to a Brazilian operation. So you pay from 13% to 16%. So that's, that are, this is a very huge difference. Comparing the service <coughs> taxation, about 46%, you decrease almost 30%. Of the price, you no pay. You will not pay in, in tax. Okay, this is really important to understand how you manage and how you understand your product here in Brazil. Uh, to open a company, in Brazil, just a second, you will need a legal representative here, a Brazilian local legal representative, and this person he has liabilities since he represents a company in Brazil, maybe a Slovenian company. So he has all these liabilities, taxes, labor, bankruptcy, environment, consumer needs, and economic loss. So that's why hire a legal representative here in Brazil is not, uh, is expensive because this guy that will represent you here in Brazil, he will support, he will be the man that any problem that happens in Brazil will be concentrated in this guy, in this legal representative. <clears throat> That's why it's important to choose well this person. And of course, it's not cheap because all these liabilities you charge in this legal representative. Brazil is very, it's, it's, it's a, uh, Imagine if you don't pay one tax, the service tax, <coughs> who you have to pay <coughs> is this guy, is this legal representative. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> I need to bring more water. <coughs> Sorry about that. Take a, take a second, take a second, no worries. Yeah. <coughs> I'm speaking, speaking and... Because Sorry about so many taxes. Yeah. And Costs. So many taxes <laughs> and concerns. <laughs> intellectual property. Let's go to intellectual property. So Brazil signed the WTO legislation to the TRIPS. So Brazil is inserted and respect trademarks, paid patents, and legal uh, and uh, and fair competition. So all this. Um, uh, international legislation Brazil respects. So it's really important 
to know that if you have a trademark, register here in Brazil as soon as you can, okay? The next slide I have is about copyrights. So Brazil signed as well the Berne Convention of Copyright. So if you have a software in Slovenia, it's already uh, protected in Brazil. So you don't need to have any organization to register it. <clears throat> it's based on the same principles of the Berne Convention. If you develop it, it's yours. So you don't need any place to register. So it's really important if you come to Brazil, you don't need to register anywhere. It's already protected in Brazil once you have the copyrights of it. Okay. And the, my last concern about Brazil is the labor law because it's very protective for the employee. I just bring you uh, an example of the, of the Brazilian cost, what say Custo Brasil. Now, our ambassador told about it, about the Brazilian cost and a salary of 5,000 reais. If you hire a person, you have a lot of labor benefits over this salary. So if you hire a person for 5,000 5, reais, you, you will pay at the end of the day, eight, more than 8,000 reais. So you see that this is one of our examples of, the, of our Brazilian cost. So more than almost more than the half of you pay for the for the salary for a person for an employee you have to pay for the government so that's why it's very difficult it's expensive to hire uh, employees in brazil so it's, uh, the cost is high and if you have to fire this person is also uh, expensive <clears throat> so this is an example as, as i told you it's an uh, um, and a, a practical example of an amount in Brazil, 5,000. Uh, 5,000 is almost uh, $1,000, okay? Almost $1,000. So you see here um, this differentiation once you have the, the salary and what, what you need to pay on benefits and other kinds of taxes and social benefits for a salary, okay? So this is my this was my presentation. I think I did in fifteen minutes, as I promised. So thank you, Matea. So here is my email and my homepage. If you would like to understand a little bit more about Brazil, I just said in fifteen minutes highlights about labor law, about legal representative, taxation, and copyrights and patents and as well as uh, data privacy. Brazil has a data privacy regulation too, very important. So the same as GDPR in Europe. So this was my, I think I got uh, the main uh, uh, points, uh, highlights of Brazil. So Matea, thank you very much for being here. And if you have any more uh, clarifications, I'll be at your entire disposal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Paolo, for the very interesting presentation. And as uh, he said, the moment you enter Brazil, you're on the right path of success. For any questions, uh, we will open the chat after the second presenter. So you can all make any questions uh, to the both presenters at the same time. So Thank let's you. move forward. And I'd like to invite now our next presenter, Mr. Sergio Costa. You may start with your presentation, please. The floor is yours. Sergio, can you hear us? Uh, we cannot hear you. Now you can hear now, me. Yes, that now. was. Yeah. That, that was a problem between a the silence. keyboard and the chair. 
Okay. Just, Go ahead. just that. Go ahead. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to be here uh, with you this afternoon, tonight, uh, to share some insights on, on uh, how you can successfully enter the Brazilian market. Uh, and uh, I thank uh, Slobras for this opportunity. Second time I speak to the Slovenian business community. Thank you so much uh, for everyone for being here. And uh, I make myself available. And this presentation will also be made available to all the participants uh, through Slobras. So uh, after the presentation, Slobras will have a PDF file, which is free for you to share with anyone because our main objective here is to support Slovenian international companies come to Brazil and have a, a soft landing and a safe legal fast track here. Uh, so uh, a little bit about strings. Uh, this is the acronym for strategy investments in global business. And uh, we are based in Sao Paulo, but we do business globally, uh, worldwide offering tailor-made solutions to help companies which want to operate or invest in Brazil. And also we support in designing and implementing a strategy uh, while facilitating investments, providing a safe legal fast track. And we also operate as local business developers, finding business partners, customers, and service providers, and also investors which might be interested in your business. And we also support for local companies to go abroad and, and, and definitely uh, uh, I will consider contacting the, Slo uh, the global Slovenian uh, business network to know more about what Slovenia can offer to Brazilian companies. But most of all, we want to help companies reduce their entry costs in Brazil and, and, and reduce risks. Uh, a little bit about, about myself, you will be able to read about this later on in, when you get the presentation. Getting straight to the point, Brazil is, yes, it's one country as the ambassador expressed and, and it offers many opportunities to businesses. I often tell investors that Brazil is a mix of different Brazils. And it's important that you know the differences which take place from the Southern part of Brazil to the Northern part of Brazil, which may uh, tremendously impact your logistic costs it may impact your supply chain. It may impact licensing uh, to operate your business here and so on. But uh, there are a, a few uh, key topics that I want uh, foreign, foreign investors to keep in mind. The, the ambassador highlighted some of these aspects like being a huge domestic market. We are now 212.6 million inhabitants. I am based in the state of Sao Paulo, which itself accounts for 46 million inhabitants. So just one state, 46 million inhabitants with the highest income in Brazil. It's a country with the, uh, continental dimensions, but with one language. It makes all the difference. But beware that business uh, culture varies from state to state as well. One language, but different ways of perceiving how you do business. One of the roles of strings here is to help you get either yes or no as an answer. Those Brazilians participating here, forgive me, but it's very hard to get a no from a Brazilian. They say, yeah, 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 I'm checking this when they are not. So helping uh, foreign companies get the right yes or the right no as an answer is part of what we do here at strings and so that we can level the expectations and make sure that we know exactly the, where we are stepping in. Uh, the exchange rate in Brazil is extremely favorable uh, to foreign investments. Uh, and uh, Brazil, uh, but in, in last year, Brazil was, uh, you know, held the 11th position as the largest destination of FDI. A year before, Brazil was ranked number six. Uh, by uh, UNCTAD. So the idea here is that you know that despite having a favorable exchange rate for foreign direct investment, uh, you should not take any opportunity for granted. You have, to, uh, it's not because it's cheaper that everything that is offered to you is the best option. Our role here is to uh, assess the alternatives that are offered to you. But exchange rates can also have a the other side of the coin, 
which makes importing to Brazil extremely costly. So this uh, makes companies speed up their intentions of having a local production instead of just importing goods uh, or services to Brazil. Uh, you know, here, different backgrounds coexist peacefully. It's an important uh, economy in Latin America. So many foreign companies consider establishing Brazil to first tackle the domestic market and second, make Brazil a platform for their exports to the region, uh, taking advantage of the Mercosur agreements and, and, and making it easier for them to export from Brazil to neighboring countries like Chile, Argentina, Colombia, and, 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 and Peru and Uruguay, for example. Uh, Brazil is a democracy, which is great. And there is an increasing demand for goods and services, especially if they have more added value. It's, uh, it's always well received by Brazilians. Brazilians are you know, early adopters of technology. And we often, uh, as a young population, you know, we ourselves, uh, Paulo, I think it's your mic, which is open. Thank you. And uh, we have 11, uh, 150 million uh, internet users, which is great because, you know, most Brazilians uh, are intense in the usage of social media. And most of those social media, about 95% is accessed via uh, mobile devices. So if your company is really willing to tackle the market, considering having a digital strategy is key as well for your company. Uh, we have seen that a new labor uh, law has passed and pension reform took place two years ago. It, was, it is already a very important movement uh, in Brazil. And Brazil itself has a strong presence of international co corporations. And one thing that is very important to say that a Slovenian company stab, legally established in Brazil will be considered by the government as a Brazilian company. So if the cost of Brazil is high to uh, uh, Brazilians, it will also be high to the foreign companies. And we will have the same conditions to compete equally because both companies, uh, a local company and a foreign uh, company will be considered as a local company. So you will have the same conditions to compete in this market. Uh, but other, there are other uh, topics that you have to keep in mind, and these are more like a, attention, uh, a call to attention. Uh, discussions on tax reform is still ongoing, and I don't expect the, the tax reforms to take place now, ne uh, nor uh, neither the next year. Uh, the infrastructure in Brazil varies, but uh, public-private partnership uh, and concessions have been in a rise and they are bringing much needed upgrades, which will end, at the end impact positively to the logistic costs and give more competitiveness to Brazil. The OECD requirements uh, to, uh, you know, are here to boost the necessary change as well. So Brazil has entered this agenda and will certainly address uh, many bureaucratic issues that need to, uh, 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 to be changed so that Brazil will enter OECD. Uh, pay attention, your competitors might, may already be here in Brazil. So take a look at who your competitors are in, in Slovenia or in Europe and, and make sure uh, to find out where they are. If you can find them, strings can do this for you. Track a re the recovery in the domestic market after uh, the COVID-19. Remember, this is a huge domestic market. So there might, this might be, as the ambassador highlighted, this might be the right time for you to consider entering Brazil because it's a big market, always challenging. And remember, 212 million inhabitants is not a small deal. It's always a big deal. And keep in mind elections which are coming in October. They might affect the way that Brazil behaves they might affect the way that Brazil, you know, uh, the local authorities uh, will implement in terms of policies. But keep in mind that uh, Brazil has gone through changes throughout the years, and it's still a, a wonderful place for doing business. Challenging, but wonderful place for doing business. So exactly where in Brazil should you consider entering? 
Uh, I have a breakdown of the Brazilian uh, population distribution by region. In the Southeast region, where we are now, we have Sao Paulo State, Rio de Janeiro State, Minas Gerais State, and Espiritu Santo State. You know, we have this concentration, but it's not uh, just considering population. You should take into account exactly the other drivers uh, for your business. For example, your location in Brazil may vary depending on your business strategy. If you need to be close to a seaport, uh, which will uh, have uh, very small, uh, short lead times, uh, then you might consider one region. If, it, uh, if you're, uh, you depend a lot on, on wind and, and solar uh, incidents, so uh, because you want to produce solar uh, uh, power, you might consider the Northeast part of Brazil. Uh, it depends on what your business will offer to the Brazilian uh, society. It will depend also on what your business is going to need in terms of supply chain, in terms of qualified workforce, in terms of uh, logistics. If you want to uh, receive your uh, inputs uh, through aircraft, uh, you might consider being close to a cargo international airport, which is nearby the city of Sao Paulo, it's in Campinas. Uh, so uh, it will depend on where your market is, because remember, the whole Europe fits in the Brazilian area. So <laughs> logistics is key, and uh, it might be an important cost for you to consider. Uh, but if you need raw materials, you might consider the, the northern part of Brazil. And it will also depend on how digital your business is. With the pandemics, the, the largest amount of the population uh, of the Brazilian population shifted the way they purchase goods from going to the stores, the physical stores, they shifted to uh, the digital marketplace. Uh, so that's why Amazon Web Services, uh, Am Amazon uh, increased it, its presence in Brazil. Mercado Livre, which is one of the, the digital marketplaces as well, has increased its presence in Brazil to address this market need. And we have one of our associates, uh, Legros, which is an associate company to Slobras. They help small companies go to the digital marketplace as well. So this is something to consider. So moving forward with the presentation, we can uh, support you. And, and so the, the Slobras can help you as well, understand uh, the characteristics of each region in Brazil so that you know exactly which one will offer the best conditions and for you. And obviously each state in Brazil offers uh, tax breaks. So my advice to you is uh, be careful about the tax breaks because tax breaks may end up being a cherry on top of the cake. Uh, if, the, you know, if the tax breaks are too much, the cherry will grow so much that it's gonna end up being a watermelon on top of a muffin. So make sure you don't trust uh, what, what's just, uh, don't make decisions based on tax breaks. They do exist, they are legal, but make sure you consider what other costs will be involved because sometimes tax breaks, they come to uh, hinder your site from what, uh, you know, what the state cannot offer you. So we are here to help you address those topics. The Southeastern region, besides being the largest amount of the population in Brazil, they still concentrate the largest amount of industries. So it's important if you depend on rubber and plastics on chemicals, they are mostly concentrated in the Southeast region of Brazil. If you need computer equipment, electronic parts, uh, cosmetics, most of those industries are still concentrated here, but the federal government of Brazil is always trying to decentralize the, the production in Brazil by offering other incentives to other regions of Brazil that you, yes, you can consider, and I, I do consider other regions as well, but it's important for you uh, to consider your entry in the Brazilian market when designing your strategy. So why target Brazil for investments? Uh, here are some big numbers. I will not uh, go through all of them, but in every business, if you have an every business solution, we have more than 1 million every business companies. Uh, the third 
uh, highest uh, uh, number of agribusiness country, uh, companies in the world. Uh, so it's important that if you have a solution, if you are a startup company offering solutions for the agribusiness, Brazil is the place to be. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we have the world's largest uh, 2,000 companies uh, in Brazil. It's, it's big enough. 250,000 IT companies and software companies as well. 13,000 startups uh, and 21 unicorns valued more than $1 billion US dollars, uh, worth. So it's, there's something going on in Brazil that you should be aware of. Uh, in terms of manufacturing metals manufacturing, you know, one, one, uh, 250,000 companies here. Financial services, half a million companies uh, operating in Brazil providing financial services. So if you are a fintech company, you should definitely consider coming to Brazil because your solution can definitely uh, fill in the gap that those uh, uh, fin uh, fintechs are not uh, matching yet. Uh, there is uh, 10,000 medical devices manufacturing companies in Brazil. So it's, it's something for you to take care of, uh, to take a look at, because uh, we can only have those big numbers if we have good universities, good technical uh, uh, skilled workforce, if we have the conditions to flourish uh, those uh, industries or those sectors. And in terms of renewable energy, for example, we are the third highest renewable energy capacity in the world, more than whole LATAM combined. So this tells us that you, you have to open your eyes to the opportunities that are here in Brazil. So talking about opportunities, I have listed healthcare and pharma, if combined with telemed telemedicine and cosmetics with functional uh, properties, this is mostly welcome. Machinery and equipment, food and beverages. I, I have crafted this name, Anytech. Bring your technology to Brazil. It, whether this agri-tech, fintech, ed-tech in the educational side, aerospace and defense, please do come here because the, there are a number of, of policies which have been put together to boost uh, these uh, sectors in Brazil. Clean tech and, and renewable energy, mostly welcome, uh, because we are already very clean energy uh, driven country, but we are open to welcome any other technologies that you might have. Media and digital services, which can export from Brazil to the world, IT infrastructure, data centers, uh, because we need more infrastructures and, uh, in data centers, and, and I'm assessing a number of companies doing that and obviously IT related services. Everything in Brazil is going to the cloud. So make sure that you will be here, not just to uh, serve this way, but also to offer services and, and solutions. Hospitality and startups as well, mostly welcome to Brazil. Electric vehicles, it's, it's in, in a boost now. Agriculture, forestry, combining carbon credits and sustainability. Mining, defense, we just saw a Slovenian com uh, company in the defense sector being opened uh, in, in, in Goiás state. Financial services, infrastructure, mainly if you're, if you're an engineering company offering solutions that could help Brazil with, with its concessions and public-private partnership programs to go on, also a must. Logistics, combining mobility in smart cities, Welcome as well, because uh, the, there is a, an increased uh, demand for that. And obviously, mergers and acquisitions taking a uh, chance of the favorable exchange rate, but make sure that will not, you will not purchase anything because of price. Buy it because it makes sense to your business strategy, not just for Brazil, but your global uh, uh, approach uh, strategy as well. So here, my suggestions to you when you are considering Brazil. First of all, plan and plan a lot. Carefully design your strategy considering the pros and the cons. Make sure that you will not uh, take for granted, uh, for example, uh, uh, things that you have learned from other uh, initiatives. Learn about the country before you decide. You know, make sure you understand you know, the culture, the business environment the standards that are here. Make sure that if you, if you have an electronic device, 
make sure that the plug that will fit in the outlet, the power outlet, you know, you comply with the local legislations and regulations and standards and understand all the taxes like my friend uh, Paulo Perotti expre expressed in the previous presentation, understand what the tax burden will be if you only import those or if you will assemble those here. A huge change, and he addressed this uh, with uh, property uh, properly. Find your local partner who can validate your assumptions and your plan. Maybe you can use uh, the local support from Slobras from the Slovenian embassy in Brasilia, from Strings, LGPD, uh, or Allegros, uh, you can use our services or you can contact a Slovenian business which is already operating in Brazil to understand the pros and the cons and the, uh, what challenges they had when establishing their business in Brazil. So this is networking. Make your network, make your net work for you. Uh, I have heard this before, but uh, you know our network is for this, and that's why the Slovenian uh, uh, the global business network is here to help us validate our assumptions and 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 see the caution signs along the road, and take a close look at the standards and intellectual property. I'm so happy that Paulo already addressed this, and, and this is a, a major issue always. And please don't take your previous success in other markets for granted. Entering Brazil is a whole new business, it's a whole new story. And, and definitely don't uh, assume that you know everything. This, these are my final remarks and concluding, foreign companies continue investing in Brazil. Brazil is an opportunity that cannot be neglected. Uh, the real devaluation makes it cheaper for, to foreign investors but make sure you, again, as I said, don't take for granted your past, previous success and don't take for granted that it's cheap, it's good. You have to carefully select the opportunities. Uh, targeting high income and population density can be a good strategy, focusing on the southeastern part of Brazil, but don't close your eyes to the rest of Brazil. And entering this market does need preparation and local support. Don't, co don't come alone uh, pretending you're, you're, you are the best. You might be good at what you do, but entering Brazil is a new adventure, a new a chapter in your business story. And this is it. And then voila, and I'm here with all my contact info. You're going to have this presentation sent to you right after the, the, this webinar. Thank you so much. Voila. Muito obrigada, Sérgio. Thank you very much, Mr. Costa, for an impressive uh, presentation and lecture, of course and very valuable insights uh, on promoting Brazil and how to enter Brazil. And um, I have to admit that this is the most impressive thing. Don't, you're good as, you're good what you do and don't think you're the best coming into this huge country. So right on that. Um, as Sergio said, any tech are welcome to contact the strings. So please, uh, any questions addressed to these two first presenters uh, can be asked now. So I can open the chat box now for you guys. You can raise your hand or just leave it in the chat box or we can leave it for the end, to the end of the event. I'll give you a few seconds to decide. If someone has any questions? May please. I ask something? Yes, of course, go um... ahead. Yeah. yeah, I didn't ask before because I, did, I didn't know that we'll be addressing this, uh, let's say, as we go. But I had a question for, um, for um, sorry, uh, for Mr. Uh, Paolo. Uh, you mentioned that there is no tax in, you know, bringing your money out to Brazil in forms of dividends uh, and also to Slovenia. Are you, is this... Um, a claim that you can make on the Brazilian part as well, or are you maybe also uh, uh, aware of any this bilateral tax treaty that would also, um, you know, make you not pay extra tax when also this money also arrives into Slovenia? Okay, the first thing I can, every country has a different uh, tre uh, treaty or a different kind of uh, treatment that it can do based on, on, on any kind of 
profits or double taxation. And by far, I think the, the most intelligent uh, thing to do because we will pay just uh, uh, the, once you incorporate in Brazil a company, you are compared to Brazilian. So you can, you, you be a Brazilian company just like the others. So though there's, there will be no differentiation between you and other Brazilians. So there's no importation, there's nothing uh, to up, uh, upsell your product. So that's, that's the, the, the question of why it's in, interesting because it just in incorporation costs it just incorporate uh, like papers and uh, just uh, 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 bylaws and uh, certifications that your company is incorporated here. And if you are like a software company, this you do like very fast, very quickly, or your service provider, you can do it very fast. You can already incorporate here in two weeks, three weeks, and already uh, take aside all this, uh, this taxation that you are based on exportation or importation of tax. So just it's not just like the, the withholding tax that's 15%, but other taxations to like ISS and other, uh, there's a social contribution on profit too that, is, that covers it. So all this, uh, all this sort of taxations, they are, they, they don't exist if you incorporate and sell directly in Brazil. Thank you. Okay, thank Sergeant. you very much. Sergeant, go on. I would like to add one comment to that, uh, Angel. Uh, there are many policies which often take place in Brazil when the country wants to boost specific sectors or types of activities in Brazil. And for example, the Ministry of Economy has just published a week ago a tech, import tax exemption on hundreds and hundreds of items. So you might incorporate your business here and keep a close look at these types of policies because until 2023, the import tax for some items, mainly microelectronic items, will be zero import taxes. So this is something for companies to take a look at every now and then because they might benefit from these uh, tax exemptions, which are not forever, but you might take uh, advantage of their existence and then remain more competitive uh, importing goods to Brazil. Uh, let me just add something. All this data that Sergio and Paolo just talked about it, we also uh, publish in Spirit uh, Slovenia Porter. This was no Okno, so all these data and all the information you can get there as well to so just access their portal. Great to hear that. Thank you. Anyone else? We can. Okay. So we continue now with our panelists um, on the example of a good um, practice in Brazil. Devisoft, so please, Primoz, if you can start your presentation. Uh, thank you, Matea. Uh, I'm without the presentation, but I will try to, uh, to explain our story. So I'm really honored that you selected Devisoft as a good example of entering to Brazil market. Uh, and I'll be more than happy to share our experience, uh, even though that we still think uh, the Eversoft is in, still in a startup mode. So we are still uh, expanding and trying to grow in Brazilian market. Uh, but uh, this is our story. So just to be quickly to, to tell that uh, all uh, visitors will know what Eversoft is. Uh, so we provide and we import uh, measurement instru instruments and software basically for uh, all the industries that do some sort of R&D in Brazil and uh, the market is just huge. So in Brazil, they are doing everything from the cars to trucks, to rockets, to heavy machinery, to electric motors, to green energy. So the opportunities like already all the colleagues uh, told us are huge. Uh, so if I go 
just to tell you about motives why Devasoft entered the uh, Brazilian market. Uh, initially, we entered because uh, we needed to support our global customers uh, uh, that were already our customers, for example, Volvo, Scania, Komatsu. So these customers, of course, they expect a lot from us and they also expect to have uh, a good technical support available in Brazil. Uh, these, all these companies, they do a lot of development and manufacturing in Brazil and we had to be present there to, to support them fully. But uh, the second even biggest motive for us is of course to, to scale, to increase the business because as already mentioned, uh, Brazil is a huge, has a huge domestic market uh, in basically all the industries and for us uh, there is a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, opportunities in aerospace, uh, uh, aerospace market, heavy machinery, agriculture, uh, power generation, green energy, so these are all the markets that we are tackling at the moment. Uh, so for sure, motive in the business is do business and do it well. Um, our office is currently located in Sao Paulo. Uh, our, our team in, uh, in our company is uh, five people, uh, but I would say that even if we would have 20, it would be, not be enough. Uh, so, but we are, we are trying to grow organically. Uh, slowly so finding the customer and when we need more people adding more people uh, now if i go to to the actual challenges that we experienced when we entered the brazilian market so first challenge when you go there is you know how to incorporate so uh as already colleagues said, it's very good to have uh, or to, to contract a local lawyer or anybody who has experience doing that. Uh, we, we did the same. Uh, it costs money, but it's, it's faster because if you do it alone, it's too complicated. So even with this help, it took us more than one year uh, to be able to start uh, selling our products in Brazil. So because every, every process that you do just takes a lot of time. People are slow. So when you incorporate, you need to open the bank account. You need to put the uh, startup capital. Uh, you, you need to get importation license. And every process takes at least one month, if not three months. So, but once you start, this is, this is behind you and you can you can start uh, working the business. Uh, then the second thing that hits you is just how huge the Brazil is. So uh, this, uh, it brings a lot of logistics. And uh, if you are a company like us, uh, when you do business in all these different industries are scattered, are scattered around Brazil, um, and this brings, of course, challenges. Uh, our team is located in uh, Sao Paulo state, so uh, it's fairly easy to, to handle these states and even south of Brazil. But when you start going north, of course, then it's, uh, it's better to either have a partner locally present in the north. Otherwise, of course, there will be a lot of costs when you start to travel to customers uh, up and down. Um, then another, another thing that we are still struggling uh, in a lot of the customers, and, may, uh, and I think uh, Sergio outlined that very well, is you must not think that you are the smartest person when you come to Brazil. So you need to really uh, prove yourself uh, that you have a good authority, that you have a good product. And in my experience, a lot of, a lot of uh, businesses, customers are very sympathetic to the traditional players on the market. Uh, so even if you have a better technology, uh, you are, uh, let's say, Davisoft, we are uh, uh, innovating our business, but that does not mean anything in Brazil. You, you have to be talking to customers for really a long time. You have to prove yourself. Uh, and once you do that, then the business comes uh, much easier. So it's really what they said before me is try to, to get on a friendly level 
uh, with the engineers, with the decision makers, and your life will be much easier. And for us, uh, that is so much true. We try to host, we try to invite engineers to Slovenia. We try to show them what Devasoft really is, how we treat customers. And once you do that, they get your story and it's much easier to work for them. Then uh, the opportunities will find you at that customers. Uh, probably the biggest challenge uh, that we have is the importation uh, process. Uh, that in Brazil is quite complicated and it takes uh, a lot of time and a lot of nerves uh, to do it correctly. Uh, but it's not if you do it alone. You know, in Brazil, you will sooner or later, you will start working with a company that would, will want to do importation process by themselves. So that means that you have to handle your own importation, but you have several customers that want to do importation by themselves because they have their own uh, importation departments and with everybody, there are just different rules. And uh, what we learned is we, we did it ourselves. Our manager uh, spent a lot of money with all this paperwork, but at the end, we just figure out it's cheaper to hire uh, somebody, have it in the office or external company that helps you with all the paperwork. Uh, it saves a lot of time. And uh, do it yourself is just a waste of money. You have to focus on what you do best and keep this importation, uh, importation process to, to the people who are experienced. Uh, the last thing that I would uh, expose is also the high cost of employment, uh, uh, especially the highly skilled and experienced engineers that would... Uh, somehow speed up your presence and your sales in the local market uh, tend to be quite expensive compared to other countries. So uh, be prepared that you will have to pay uh, more if you, if you go with experienced and highly skilled uh, 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 engineers. Uh, uh, but how we, we started and we still work is uh, we contract, we contract uh, people until they reach certain level of, uh, of sales, of success, and then we try to, to employ them as a full-time employees in Davisoft. This helped us uh, lower the costs uh, in initial stages, and we still work, uh, work this way uh, quite a lot. But of course, in the, in the long term, you want to have employees there that are also, uh, that feel that they are part of the family in your company. Um, so, Matea, that would be all from, from my side regarding our, our experience entering Brazil market. Uh, of course, if anyone has any questions, I will be available here. Uh, I will also put my email and my WhatsApp number uh, into the chat box. So anyone has any questions, I will be happy to, to answer them. Thank you very much, Mrs. Rome. Uh, and many success for you in Devasoft in Brazil. Um, uh, if anyone has any question for Primoz, please uh, can do it now. Raise your hand. Okay. So uh, we can't compare countries, right? We cannot compare Slovenia with Brazil and Regardless of uh, the, the, the amount of people, the extensions of the country, we see the challenges everywhere in the world. So even in Slovenia, as it is 2 million inhabitants only, but we face challenges there as well. But as Paulo said, the country is, when you enter Brazil, you gain many opportunities here. Uh, I'm gonna invite now uh, Erika Dvorsak, also the author of ebook, The Slovenian uh, Business in Brazil, as uh, Andrzej Skodler already mentioned in the beginning. It's the project uh, from Slobras and Slovenian Global Business Network. So please, Erika. Hello, hello. Good hello. evening, I guess. Uh, I am Erika Dvorsak. I'm Brazilian, half Slovenian. I'm, I'm originally from Rio. 
And I work with digital marketing. I'm a media buyer and a strategist for online advertisement campaigns, mostly for independent small entrepreneurs and stuff like that. And I also do copywriting, so I guess that's why I've been recruited by the Slovenian Global Business Network team to put together an ebook, which I named uh, Slovenian Business in Brazil, a land of opportunities. So now I'm gonna try and share. Can you give me a thumbs up if you see my screen? Yep. All right, so the ebook is, uh, first of all, I must say it's sponsored by Slobras. And it's meant to be like a concise introductory guide for the Slovenian business people all over the world who are interested in the Brazilian market. So in here, I managed to put all the basic information about the country, some tips by the, some people I, I see here, they also have had their contribution for the information that's here. Uh, much of the information also has already been mentioned by Sergio, by Paolo, and uh, it's important also that I don't forget to mention that this ebook is a part of a larger project by Slovenian Global B Business Network. And their project is called Winning Business with Slovenes, and the purpose is to encourage Slovenes all over the world to use the expertise and know-how of the Slovenian diaspora and establish business partnerships. So, uh, you can expect more, more countries, I guess, if Mr. Chalet, he can probably confirm that the next one is France, but maybe Angers knows also what's coming next, but I know more stuff is coming. And uh, now to the e-book, to the, e the main sources of information I use, I use three basic main sources, one of which is Apex, which is the Brazilian Trade and Investment Promotion Agency. I also referenced the Brazilian federal government's website like a lot throughout the e-book. E and one of the most important sources I used was a previous conference ran by Slovenia Global Business Network again. I guess it, it happened earlier this year, I guess March. And uh, you guys shared your own experiences and I used that a lot to put this together. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a spoiler, just a little bit of a spoiler. So we start out with this, some numbers and information about the Brazilian market a lot of which has already been mentioned by Mr. Sergio, Mr. Paulo. Then we move on to some of the legal requirements. Do you, what, what is a CNPJ? Why, why do you need that stuff? Who you need to contact and what to do? And uh, a lot, I feel like I'm repeating Mr. Sergio a lot, but it's because my thing is is concise. Like if you if you want to dive dive deeper, you should look for Sergio and ask for his advice. But my thing is just like a a tiny uh, brief informative, if you will. Then we move on to the taxation part, which usually scares everyone. I mean, rightfully. <laughs> but again, I'm gonna repeat them again that the the amount of taxes we pay down here is crazy but i i think it's worth the complication like you you'll fight through that and but you know it's it's worth it are you gonna miss out on like the the largest market of latin america that that's even crazier in my opinion and then we move on to the slovenian presence in in brazil i mentioned uh the slovenian companies that are active here um, I kind of present the platform which Matej is going to talk about next, which is the Slovenian business map. And then we have more about the past conference that you guys held in March. Uh, we mentioned all of the companies here, the Drava, uh, Gorenje, Biolinker, Arex. And I also wrote out the tips that you guys gave, like what, what are the best practice? Should you learn Portuguese? Yes, you should. And other, other things that you have to keep in mind before you think of coming here. Then we have a little a bit more on the Slovenian, uh, Slovenian community overall. We have the Slovenian Global Business Network platform. 
the Union of the Slovenians of Brazil. And I finish it off with a bunch of links that you can reference if you want to know more. And that's basically it for me. Just a quick presentation. If you want to know more, you're going to have to download it. But we had a glitch today, didn't we, Matea? We had a, a glitch. Yeah. This was supposed to be on Slobra's website now. Exactly. But there has been a massive glitch. We put it on LinkedIn for the time being. But I don't know if you can actually, if you can put it on the chat somehow, that would be useful but i really don't know i know 100 percent that this is on uh linkedin slobras linkedin yeah and also it's going to yeah, and Slo uh, slovenian global business network they will also okay. upload uh but yeah we had some technical prob problems uh, today with the slobras uh, web page and we're on it uh, while i was uh, monitoring uh, the the conference today I was at the same time with the IT trying to resolve that problem. So later on, I'm gonna send all the contacts, all the links, uh, and also this uh, amazing ebook uh, made uh, by Erica. Thank you very much, Erica. You're very welcome. good job. Yeah, very good job. It's gonna be very helpful. Um, My pleasure. Uh, to we're gonna we're gonna share it to all the uh, communities out uh, out uh, Brazil. And um, anyone can use this uh, material uh, informative. So very good, very good. Thank you. Lots of success to you, Erika. Um, we're happy to have you among us. Uh, and now I'm going to briefly show you the Slovenian Business Interactive Virtual Map of Slovenian companies, products, service in Brazil, and the entire Slovenian diaspora in Brazil. This project was actually developed uh, by Slobras and the Embassy of the Republic of Slovenia in Brasilia and uh, sponsored by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Slovenia with the support of Union of Slovenians in Brazil and of course Slovenian Global Business Network who will expand this map globally later on. So I'm going to access right now just a second. Now you have to share, share thumbs up if I'm uh, doing okay. Good. So mainly propose of the 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 this business map is to promote uh, business businesses Slovenian businesses uh, in Brazil, and uh, it's divided by category, segment, different segments, and uh, subcategory. So for instance, we can go to some services and or yeah and we can find all the slovenes or all the slovenian companies based in brazil and um yeah and if you click on you get all the informations uh, of the company so the map is actually in three languages we have it in slovene in portuguese and english and uh yeah you can find any company you wish to contact uh, when you enter in Brazil. If you want to get some uh, counters, uh, accounting, you get the quality administration here. Uh, legal counseling, we have our LGBT uh, PD solutions here. So, and also food and drinks, uh, wine wine uh, distributors and wine we have even wine uh, slovenian wine producers living in uh, diaspora uh, slovenes living in brazil producing wine so we have their wineries also here presenting so yeah that's it and um let me just stop sharing okay so yeah if you have any questions please ask them now and uh, okay hello oh something that was excellent congratulations for this amazing tool I, I don't think Sergio you're on this map I was trying to look for it because you can also look as a keyword uh strings and 
I can't, couldn't find it. So you have to, I'm going to send the link and you will have to put your info company inside the map as well. Right, right away. Right Mate, I would have a question. Maybe, maybe it's Please also do. interesting for everyone. Um, currently, Brazil is still uh, in, a, in a COVID stage that uh, forbids to enter people that refuse uh, to take the vaccine. COVID vaccine. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, yes, and uh, uh, we, we have some challenge that uh, because of this restriction, some of the engineers from the headquarters uh, cannot, uh, cannot travel to Brazil. Uh, do you maybe have any information about if this is going to change in Brazil or Brazil is going to keep forcing this, uh, this rule uh, for the rest of the year? Anyone from the authorities? I don't have this. I don't have this answer. I can, I can, I can try and answer, uh, Mr. Romé. Uh, I don't think so. It's my very honest, uh, very honest um, response. The, the reason being, um, Brazil has done extremely well in terms of vaccination. Um, the the share of vaccinated population is very high, um, and um, I they have relaxed the rules because um, uh, about a month ago. Even if though you were fully vaccinated, you still needed a test and a special declaration to be filled out before you travel to Brazil. These two conditions have been removed, but the full vaccination is there to stay. There are no indications this will be changed. And if you ask me for my personal opinion, this will not be changed. So I think for any foreigners traveling to Brazil, do not count on it. It might happen. Obviously, I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball, but given the high level of vaccination, um, of Brazilian population, I think um, it's it's very very unlikely. I wouldn't count on it. Okay, thank you, Gorast. They they are even asking for the fourth now. So, yeah, for the fourth dose. Okay, yes, but, uh, but uh, sorry, uh, Matea, but, but yeah. you know, fully vaccinated means one or two, no? Um, yeah. For the incoming travel. Here they're offering and exactly offering the fourth or even, you know, the booster shots as they call them. But uh, for the incoming, fully vaccinated means, uh, depending on the vaccine, obviously one or two shots now. Uh, and the 14 days uh, must, uh, must pass since the last shot. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Anyone else has any questions regarding uh, entering Brazil? We're gonna send the transcript. Yes, we're gonna send all the presentation and uh, all the material that was presented today. Yep, sorry, can I ask a, a quick question? Please, Anje. Yeah, I wasn't on. here from the start, so I apologize, okay. but I, I do wanna ask if let's say a company doesn't wanna fully enter the Brazilian market, but for example, would like to work with a local distrib distributor. How would somebody go about doing that, and what would be what would be the the benefits and dangers of actually doing business in Brazil that way? Thank you. Let me address that from the strategic standpoint, and then I suggest that Paulo enters with the with the legal part. Paulo, if you agree with me. From the strategic standpoint, uh, Anjan, uh, you know, finding a local partner could speed up your entry in the market. It could be a way of uh, having someone local with already all the permits, all the, uh, uh, you know, with customers already, which might be of interest to you. So this could be a very good way to minimize your risks instead of having a greenfield project to enter Brazil. Uh, but there are other, there are other things that you have to consider, and then I pass it on to Paulo. Um, once you have a, a, a commercial representative here in Brazil, or, or an agent, or any kind of commercial represent, representative in Brazil, it's important to 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 have a, a very well formalized. Uh, mainly the, the determination clause, because as you know, the Brazil is, it's, it, of course, it's a little bit protective about Brazilian entrepreneurs and agents. And I would focus on, uh, 
on the ter on a very well defined termination clause, because if you terminate without uh, um, uh, supporting or give any kind of support or or uh, for the day to the other you decide to terminate the agreement, even if it's written in the in the agreement, this possibility. Uh, of course, all the investment that was uh, done by the Brazilian agents who open for you the, the, the market in Brazil will be charged ju uh, judicially. Uh, we, we, as a lawyer, I have to, to, to prepare yourself for this kind of, of expectation because a lot of uh, companies, even if it's written in the agreement that no indemnization would be paid if the if it's if occurs a termination clause, uh, and if you decide to terminate it, uh, not based on, on fair uh, on a fair clause, okay. I'd like to to terminate based on, on just on the agreement that, that I would like to be personally in Brazil, not more, not anymore uh, based on a representative or commercial representative. So I would be a very uh, uh, restrictive on rights determination clause. This would be my this would be my my suggestion for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank maybe you. I can also add a word or two because uh, Davis of also entered initially to Brazil market uh, uh, through a local distributor. Uh, initially, it's uh, very good because uh, you will uh, you will gain the initial contacts much faster with the, with the established distributor who has his hands on on your market in Brazil on your customers. Uh, but later, when you when you try to scale, uh, we believe that it's much better to invest uh, into your own company because. Uh, with distributors, that's at least our experience. It's very, it's very uh, hard to scale because usually distributors will, will handle many different companies and uh, they will never be able to focus on only one. So on the long term, and if you really, if your intent is really to grow to scale in the local market, it's uh, it's better on the long run to just uh, uh, invest into your own uh, subsidiary. Great, thank you. If, if we can just go back a little bit to the business map, uh, maybe Ange. Um, the thing is that it was a project of Slobras, and Sonia here is asking where this is going to be expanded out to Brazil. So Ange, do you have any any information on that about that? Honestly. At this point, I it's have zero idea about that, <laughs> but I will be happy to inquire this uh, with other team members and get back to you, Sonia, on that, on or any other, uh, any uh, anyone who is also interested into having this information. Thank you, Anja. Uh, okay, anyone else has any question? Okay. It looks like we've covered all your questions. Uh, I hope we have a positive uh, outcome from this event and let's, can, let's start and continue doing business uh, in Brazil. So we, uh -huh. okay, Sasha Levan, please, she raise your hand. Uh, yeah, if there are no more questions, uh, I would really like to compliment you on this event and all the prominent speakers, uh, because I think that this is really, really valuable information for Slovenian companies. And I regret there are not uh, many more Slovenian companies, but as I see you're recording the event, uh, so hopefully you will be able to promote further uh, this event through the video video recording of the conference, but uh, I think that anyone who wants to enter the Brazilian market uh, got all the information right here in one hour and a half. So really uh, 
congratulations uh, on a very concise, straight to the point uh, conference and uh, looking forward to more events that you perform also in Slovenia. Thank you very much, uh, Sasha Levan, uh, and also thank, uh, thank you, Spirit, uh, for supporting uh, our events. Um, we, we, as we said, all the informations, we try to publish as much as we can into the portal of Spirit in Izvozno Okno. So Slovenian companies has the access to other information. And of course, I'm gonna be uh, very close with strings and, uh, and GBD, so we can get all the information from Brazil and share with you in back in Slovenia. Um, so I would like to thank you. We, we have also, I'm not uh, sure if you're aware of, but we have also uh, like a uh, information base, uh, which is called Soul Exports, where Slovenian companies express the interest uh, of different foreign markets. Uh, so, uh, as you will be sending me, so not just Slobra's uh, business club, but also other business clubs, as you will be sending me information about the events, we will be not just posting it on Izvozno Okno, but uh, send it also target Italy to the companies that are interested in specific markets where we will inform them also of not just of the event that you are organizing, but in case of any further information that you are a starting point uh, for entering the market. Perfect. So uh, I'm really glad that uh, we're investing this money into events like that because this is exactly the point that we're trying to make. So uh, let's uh, go abroad, uh, let's be strong together and let's work together. Thank you. For your oh, kind you words. For your thank you. And Mr. Ambassador. Yeah, my name is So I really wanted to also join all those that said nice things about this event. I think it was very, very good, very concise in a very short and limited uh, time. Uh, I think people can got a lot of information. Um, so congratulations. Um, maybe I would take the liberty of um, replying to the Sonia's question about the, the map because uh, I was involved in the beginning and uh, this is um, a, a joint initiative of the embassy of Slovras. And just to say who is next, I think Canada can be next if, if you take if you take some initiative. So uh, I don't think that I think the ideal you know um, final end would be to have the map of all Slovenian or Slovenian, Slovenian related. It's not just Slovenian businesses, it's not just Slovenian products now, but it's all the companies that work with Slovenia too, distributors, importers and others now. Um, and why I'm saying this, because I think in the case of Brazil, I think it was such an extremely useful um, exercise also for us to get to know each other. There, there were companies we didn't know about before, before doing this. So I think it's a very valuable and very useful exercise to do. Um, and you might, you might learn more about Slovenian business uh, diaspora in Canada and elsewhere uh, that you might know. Um, so I strongly recommend um, you get in touch maybe with uh, SGBN. Um, and why not put Canada next in the list? Thank you. Well, we are, uh, just for your information, uh, tomorrow or Monday, we're in the final stage of our tender. So uh, you will be also informed of the event that we're planning within a month, uh, where we would like to get all the business clubs that we have in our network. Uh, together in one spot uh, where we can share the experience, best practices, uh, and uh, let's learn from one another. And especially let's uh, get Slovenian companies that are interested in foreign markets, uh, which are in Brazil, Brazilian club already, or in Canadian, uh, let's hook them up also for other markets because uh, that's uh, where they will get the most benefit uh, out of uh, when they're on the foreign markets. Could you please, Sonia, send some links about the uh, exploitation and all the and spirit here in the chat so people can see and get to know a little bit more about Spirit Slovenia? And of course, I'm going to send it later on to each uh, guest as well. Um, okay, so many 
comments on chat so it's mostly thank you and thank you all for coming and uh, without you this would never work would never be successful and also uh, all the colleagues that we have here Erica and everybody uh, Sandy and Jay everybody helping me uh, this was that's why this great success comes with the teamwork <laughs> right so once again, uh, we hope to see you again on our next event, which we're going to organize in June. And it's going to be probably about agrotech, which is a very strong, uh, strong thing in Brazil. So we're still uh, building the event and we'll let you know as soon as we're going to get the link and the invitation. So I would like to thank each everyone who made this meeting possible. And uh, thank all the presenters and uh, ambassador uh, for the presentation. And uh, once again, <clears throat> for coming and hope to see you next time. And goodbye to Slovenia, to Canada, to Brazil and everywhere in the world today. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye